All right. Good afternoon. Almost afternoon. Um, man, talk about a Chamber of Commerce day. This place could not be more beautiful. Um, this setting could not be more beautiful, and this is amazing, an opportunity we have to come together uh, for some great news. Um, you know, today again is a great day uh, for the city of Asheville and Buncombe County, uh, and I personally had the opportunity, uh, the, the fortune to be a part of a couple of pretty big economic development projects. And, you know, the old saying of the rising tides lifts all shifts, ships, um, that's absolutely true. I've seen that firsthand, um, and it, it, nothing more important than economic growth for our area, and what we're doing here today is, is really important. Um, my name is Michael McGuire, and I'm a pr proud to serve as the board chairman of the Economic Development Coalition for Asheville and Buncombe County. The EDC represents a 25-year partnership between Asheville Area Chamber of Commerce, our elected officials in the city and the county, as well as regional business community, the investors in the AVL 5x5. So um, each of these dedicated partners give their time and resources and support the ongoing work of the economic development because they understand the quality and the impact of high paying and great technology jobs. Um, like nothing else, um, this economic tide that we're bringing um, is what rises our entire community. So, a strong, healthy economy supports our families, supports our neighborhoods, and lifts everyone up in many, many ways. So the work of economic development requires leadership, commitment, and collaboration among also elected officials. Um, to work towards a shared vision for greater prosperity, every family in our community, community can enjoy. And we're fortunate to have a great leadership in Asheville and Buncombe County. Um, so I would ask our elected officials from Buncombe County Commission and the City of Asheville to raise your hands when we recognize you. So, I apologize, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna walk through those. So, so on the Buncombe County Commissioners, uh, we have Chairman Brownie Newman, Vice Chair Robert Presley, Commissioner Joe Belcher, and Jasmine B. Uh, Ferrara could not be with us today, but I want to recognize her. Commissioner Amanda, Ed, Amanda Edwards. Commissioner Anthony Penland. Uh, Commissioner Al Whiteside. And Buncombe County Manager Avril Pender. So thank you so much for being with us. <laughs> and representing the, the city of Asheville, partners today, we have Mayor Mester, Esther Manhammer. Vice Mayor Gwen Whistler, and City Manager Deborah Campbell. Thank you all. We saw also extend our gratitude to the Buncombe County delegation in the State House of Represent Representatives of North, in North Carolina Senate for, for their support, and including Senator Chuck Edwards, Chuck. Senator Terry Van Dyme, Representative Susan Fisher, Representative Brian Turner, Representative John Agger, Representative Chuck McGrady, and Representative Tim Moffitt. Thank you all for being here. And also representing uh, the office of Senator Tom Tillis, we have Jordan Barnes, and the office of Senator Richard Burr, Robin Ramsey. So we have a number of other key economic development supporters uh, that are with us today as well. Um, representing at the state level, we have Secretary of Commerce Tony Copeland. We have CEO of North Carolina Golden Leaf Foundation Scott Hamilton. Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina Austin Rouse. And then our own AB Tech, North Carolina's first community college, President John Gossett. Thank you. We have a lot of other uh, partners that are working behind the scene in support, but I want to recognize one of those key members uh, that, that uh, are behind the scenes working for our projects, and that's Duke Energy. And today, represented, representing Duke, we have Jason Wall, Bill Roberts, and Bobby Moore.
And the next one I want to recognize are our dedicated staff um, at the Economic Development Coalition. You know, Clark Duncan, Ryan Reagan, Desiree Monstrella, and then we have a number of other people that may be here or watching uh, streaming in the, in the office. That team absolutely works tirelessly in growing um, our economic situation in, in Asheville and Buncombe County. It is an amazing team, um, and they've been working around the clock for, for many, many weeks and months uh, on this particular project. And then lastly, I want to uh, recognize the investors of the AVL 5x5 plan. Uh, those leaders generously uh, commit personal and corporate phil philanthropical funds uh, on the ongoing growth of the EDC year after year to help our community. And again, help uh, join me in, in welcoming and congratulating them being a part of this mom momentum, momentous moment. Okay, without further ado, uh, it's my distinct honor and privilege to introduce the champion for this great state of North Carolina and, ad and an advocate for transformational economic development project for the people of Buncombe County and Western North Carolina. Please welcome, I give a warm welcome to Secretary of Commerce, Tony Copeland. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be in Asheville. It's a wonderful place. North Carolina is a wonderful state. I want to bring you greetings from Governor Cooper. Um, it seems like it's been an eternity since Governor Cooper and I were meeting with executives from the company we're getting ready to announce. And uh, now we have gotten here, and Governor Cooper, once again, is as excited about this as you are. You know, um, before I go forward, I want to talk about, we first started working on this project early this year, and I had the distinct pleasure and opportunity to sit down one afternoon with George Cecil. And what a remarkable man. And I spent several hours with him, and we talked about the history of the region, and the history of his family, and the like. Um, it was a distinct honor to do that. George Vanderbilt Cecil died Monday night. I'm very sorry for that. Let light perpetual shine upon him. He, wa he wanted, he liked, he talked about this project and it was one of his dreams too. Like it is our dreams and like it's his family's dream. But amid this historic pandemic moving forward, North Carolina is, has a robust economy and we have survived beyond measure. We are a billion dollars ahead in inward investment than when we were last year at this time. At the same time, we've got 300,000 people that are receiving an unemployment check. And we should be very concerned about them, which we are. But the fundamentals of our economy are moving strong. We never shut down construction. We never shut down manufacturing in this state. And we're poised to come back with a vengeance. And I think you see that we are. The news, I want to thank some other people too, um, and I'll get around to all this again, so I'm going to leave some people out, I'm sure. But a historical memory, years ago, Liston Ramsey, who was the former Speaker of the House from the West, we were having a conversation in his office one afternoon. He didn't have the lights on. It was about 6 o'clock. It was like sitting in the dark. And um, he sits back in his chair, and he said, Copeland, I can tell you, you know, Western North Carolina's future is going to be really hinged upon the development of Buncombe County and Asheville. He would have been delighted to see what you're doing here and with the growth of the entire West. So this is the tentacles of what we're going to announce in a few minutes are going to reach a lot further than just here. There's a couple of other people that I've been involved with, and I'm going to thank some other people at the end, but have been really instrumental. This project also demonstrates cooperative um, efforts between people of goodwill on both sides of the aisle. Uh, I see my good friend, Senator Chuck Edwards, who was critical for this. Representative Turner is here too, I see him. It's very important. What you don't see here is the work that these gentlemen and gentlewomen 
do in Raleigh every day to create an authorizing environment for me and the state to move forward and bring these large monumental projects, transformational projects into North Carolina. It looks easy when you're sitting in a place like this and this comes off without a glitch, but we've been at the grindstone on this this entire year. This did not, and also, you have been developing infrastructure and a workforce second to none. Um, the community college here, I saw the community college president here somewhere, and uh, I would say Governor Cooper would tell me to thank you as much as anybody for the workforce, because no company comes anywhere where they expect the employees to fall out of an airplane. So we want to thank you for what you're doing. Visionary companies like the aerospace industry are continuing to invest in the future and a bright future here in Asheville. The aerospace industry has been disparately hit of all the industries, as you well know. So at this particular juncture, I am pleased to announce that Pratt & Whitney, a world leader in aviation, will build a new state-of-the-art factory here in Buncombe County, adding 800 jobs in Asheville and will invest $650 million. I did say 800 jobs and $650 million, which is... This will be a high technology manufacturing center of the highest level in the world, which is the latest evidence of North Carolina, the birthplace of aviation. It's still a relevant place in the global industry. The fact that Pratt & Whitney chose North Carolina as a destination for this investment despite COVID-19 and the economic uncertainty that it is caused it says great things about the state, about Asheville, about Buncombe County and about Western North Carolina. The quality of our economy and business climate is, is great. In addition to the impact of these new jobs and investment, Pratt & Whitney plans will have a very noticeable impact here. They will have an annual payroll, payroll, not economic impact, of $54 million annually. That's buying a lot of things in the region. Over the next 12 years, the project will grow Carolina's gross domestic product by $7.4 billion and will generate over $258 million in state tax revenues. That'll, send a lot, that'll buy, build a lot of school buildings to put children in school. The state of North Carolina is proud to be a partner in this. You know, once again, I'll thank my boss, the governor. I'll thank the, the county commissioners in Buncombe County city of Asheville. One of my colleagues, uh, Austin Rouse, who is here, the Economic Development Partnership, he's had his nose to the grindstone the entire time, too. It doesn't happen between my team at Department of Commerce. I have uh, um, somewhere, there, here they are, Lex Janes and uh, Patrice. They came here today. And we have the team that put the economics of this project together. An old friend of mine, Scott Hamilton, the CEO of Golden Leaf, is, uh, we go back further than we'd like to mention, and Gordon Myers, one of my friends, I think he's here, I don't know if he's here now or there, was at one time the uh, CEO and president of Advantage West, which was the economic development there. And we've known each other a long time, and uh, um, so I'm glad to be here. The General Assembly, which I've mentioned, Community College, North Carolina Department of Transportation, the Appalachian Regional Commission, Duke Energy, Golden Leaf again, Buncombe County, Asheville Buncombe County Technical Community College, Asheville Area Chamber of Commerce, and the Economic Development Coalition of Asheville and Buncombe County. I'm pleased we're here today to mark this important occasion. It feels a little different today wearing our mask. We have to be a little cautious, but we shall get over this also. Due to the COVID pandemic, Pratt & Whitney was unable to send a representative to be with us today. So I'd like to read a statement from their president, Kaleo, Christopher Kaleo. So I shall read his remarks. I'd like to thank Governor Cooper, Secretary Copeland, the people of Buncombe County, and Asheville and the state of North Carolina. 
The Pratt & Whitney investment in North Carolina will enable us to continue to modernize and transform our operations with cutting edge technologies. Turbine airfoils are a critical component across our engine portfolio and demand will increase significantly as the market recovers over the next several years. We need to invest today to ensure that we have the infrastructure, production capabilities, and workforce in place to meet future market demand and provide the best products to our customers worldwide. We are grateful for the support provided by the state of North Carolina and the local community. Thank you, Pratt & Whitney. We're grateful to have you as a partner, and we will continue to be a business partner with you. And we will work with you, and we hope you make a lot of money. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Copeland. It is always good to have you back in Buncombe County and Western North Carolina, and especially on a day like today. <laughs> I'd also like to again acknowledge the other county commissioners who are with here, here with us today. It has been the collective work of the entire commission with common purpose on this project, along with our talented county staff that have helped make the announcement today possible. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brownie Newman, and I have the honor to serve as the chairman of the Buncombe County Board of Commissioners. I'm excited to be with all of you today on this beautiful fall morning to participate in the announcement of this historic economic development project in Buncombe County. Pratt and Whitney is one of the most recognizable names in the global aerospace industry. They join a long list of other aerospace companies that have located or expanded in Buncombe County in recent years. But the significant investment and commitment to job creation being announced by Pratt and Whitney today is without precedent. Our community's emergence as a growing hub for aerospace manufacturers is a testament to the talent and skills of the workers in our mountain region and the value of public-private partnerships. The highly skilled workforce that is necessary to attract a company like Pratt & Whitney would not be possible without strong public education partners at both the K-12 and post-secondary levels. Partnerships with private industry have led to a growing emphasis on STEM education in Buncombe County's public schools. AB Tech has also been a critical training partner to many of our community's advanced manufacturers. I am excited that AB Tech will be partnering with Pratt & Whitney on a new training initiative to ensure that a strong pool of talented and skilled workers will be available to support Pratt & Whitney's operations for many years to come. Our Board of Commissioners has been proud to support this project from its earliest days. The value of bringing 800 highly paid, advanced manufacturing jobs to Buncombe County cannot be overstated. These new economic opportunities for our county's residents come at a pivotal time as we work to strengthen and diversify our economy to create jobs that pay living wages and meaningful economic mobility. Pratt and Whitney will also make critical investments in the people in our community in ways that will be felt for generations. The company's highly acclaimed employee scholar program is just one example. This company-led initiative covers the cost of education for their employees that pursue educational advancement at the post-secondary level. We know that further education achievement by adults in a household results in positive social, economic, and health outcome, outcomes for children. The increase in cost of education have created barriers for many people, especially those from lower wealth families and communities. 
the Employee Scholar Program will help many people obtain the skills and education they need to secure a career path that leads to greater prosperity for themselves, their families, and their communities. The higher wage jobs and opportunities for educational and career advancement will change the life trajectory of generations of working families in Buncombe County. On behalf of my colleagues on the Board of Commissioners, I want to again welcome Pratt and Whitney to Buncombe County in Western North Carolina. Before I conclude, I want to again thank all the employees of Buncombe County who have worked hard on this project. There are two people in particular that I want to personally thank for their work on this project. Tim Love is Buncombe County's Director of Economic Development and Avril Pinder is the county manager for us in Buncombe County. There is no question in my mind that we would not be here today were it not for the hard work and creative problem solving that Tim and Avril took to find solutions to the many challenges involved in a project of this complexity and scale. So I'd like to ask everyone here to thank Tim and Avril for their great work. And thank you all for joining us today for this exciting announcement. Good afternoon. My name is Janice Brummett, and I am the immediate past chair of the Economic Development Coalition, and I'm now serving as the president of Asheville Chamber of Commerce's uh, Community Betterment Foundation. And for many years, I have had the honor of working alongside other community leaders to strengthen our economy and improve the quality of life for local residents. Today, today's announcement by Pratt and Whitney is a true watershed moment for our community. The economic impact and community partnerships associated resulting in this announcement will benefit Buncombe County and its citizens for generations to come. Economic development projects like this one don't happen overnight, and they require a, a lot of co collaboration, especially in a project of this magnitude. Many of you, of you in this room played integral parts in seeing this project to fruition, and our community thanks all of you for your hard work, and we're here to celebrate you today. So, in in particular, I want to thank and introduce a gentleman who is no stranger to Western North Carolina and who is a strong supporter of this project, Scott Hamilton. Scott is the president and CEO of the Golden Leaf Foundation, and Golden Leaf is a trusted and valuable economic de developer in North Carolina. Across two decades, Golden Leaf has awarded more than $1 billion to local governments and nonprofits across North Carolina for economic development projects that have resulted in more than 65,000 new jobs, almost $700 million in new payroll, and training for more than 85,000 workers. Golden Leaf provided support and key infrastructure improvements for the proposed Pratt and Whitney site location. The leadership provided for Golden Leaf over the course of this project and their financial commitment to fund necessary project infrastructure was absolutely critical in the project's success. We thank Scott and his team for their partnership. We in Western North Carolina know Scott from his work with Advantage West, with uh, his leadership in the Appalachian Regional Commission, and we are gonna welcome him back today with open arms, and thank you for Golden Leaf's um, contribution to this project. So Scott, come on up. Good afternoon, how are we? This is a good day. It is great being back in Western North Carolina, and I uh, certainly appreciate this opportunity to stand with everybody to recognize what, what a great announcement by Pratt Whitney. Um, Golden Leaf, LEAF is an acronym, a Long-Term Economic Advancement Foundation. 
were established in 1999 to provide economic development for North Carolina's tobacco-dependent, distressed, and rural communities across the state. So when a call a year ago before I started officially at Golden Leaf to get briefed on a large aerospace project that was looking at Western North Carolina, I was very excited. As I returned home to work at uh, Golden Leaf here in North Carolina, my first week and a half was making phone calls to board members, gauging their interest, which turned out to be a lot of wasted time on my part because there was a lot of interest in this. There was no convincing. The board knew what this project could do as they listened to the type of uh, uh, taxable investment that could be made and the jobs that would be created. My definition of jobs is hope, opportunity, and dignity. And this project across Western North Carolina is gonna have a tremendous economic impact that will move the needle for generations. And the community and the region should be congratulated on this announcement and being able to move it forward today. I wanna thank the members of the General Assembly that are here. Uh, they've reached out to us and expressed uh, their support to this project. But at the end of the day, the General Assembly provides funding to Golden Leaf, and for me to be able to stand here today is because they provided funding over the past 20 years and, and also provide funding currently for us to be able to invest in projects like this. I have a, a I, I don't like the word grant. To me, a grant is something that comes with no strings attached, with no expectation of a return. I always talk about we like to invest into projects. We like to fund projects projects that move the community forward. And that is the commitment that our board has made as well. So when you look at what is the return of our investment, 800 jobs and $650 million to participate in this project is quite the return. And we're proud to be able to be a part of that. Secretary Copeland, it was great to work with you and your colleagues on this as well. And the dedication of uh, the local team here from the county, from the city, from the chamber kit, uh, Clark, Tim, everybody that we were able to be involved with to be able to move this project forward. Uh, the commitment was, how do we get to yes? And our board wanted to be sure that we kept this project on track and that we were able to do our part to be able to get to yes, to be able to help the citizens of Western North Carolina with hope, opportunity, and dignity through the jobs that Pratt Whitney has announced today. With that, I thank each of you and say congratulations to all involved. Scott, thank you very much. It uh, means a great deal to have you home, brother. Don't, don't stay too long in the eastern part of the state. We much prefer to have you here. Uh, when I talk about here today, it's an honor to be amongst all of you, uh, not only in the crowd, but also all my friends over here. And it's been mentioned, but do you realize we've been at Project Ranger for a year and a half? In my office, we don't even, we hadn't mentioned Pratt & Whitney. It's known as Project Ranger. It's been ingrained in our heads for all these, these months because of obvious reasons, uh, non-disclosure. But I've had a number of people that's helped us through this project, none other greater than my friend Tony Copeland. He's mentored me, he's guided me, but most importantly, he's been a friend throughout this whole process. I would call him at all hours of the day on the weekend and say, Tony, what do we do? How do we move forward? I have never seen a project this size, this large, this important to Western North Carolina come down the pipe. Listen, you talked about Liston Ramsey. There were some back then, but not recently. And also, I'm, I'm sorry they're not here today, but uh, Shane Eady and Jennifer Crusoe from uh, Pratt & Whitney, uh, they've been the team with whom we've in, uh, interacted the most all the way through these uh, past 18 months and uh, wish they could be here. I can recall the, the first time that uh, EDPNC gave us a heads up, there was a project. And uh, Ben Teague reached out to them and they said, we have a project, but quite frankly, ah. We think it's headed to a large metro area. You need to respond on RFP by tomorrow. Literally, this is 9 o'clock in the morning. I'll turn it the next day. And we said, okay, but we did it. 
endless hours of brainstorming sessions, multiple, multiple iterations of innovative and creative solutions. We surpassed every single hurdle that was thrown in front of us. Quite frankly, it's a staggering accomplishment for all of us. So growing up here in the mountains, I've learned and, and appreciate that yes, we are fiercely independent people, but we also know how to join together when there's something for the greater good of our community. That's the way it's always been. When we set our minds to something and have a vision, we cannot be stopped. This project truly took a team effort, and we knew it from the very beginning and from the outset of it. It was too big and too complicated and enormous for any one group to handle it by themselves. That's why our family and our company leaned in and provided the land for this transformative project. So if you'll give me just a second of a, of a personal privilege, I'd like to introduce my family. There are my uh, brother, Christopher, and I have four sisters sandwiched in between the two of us. And all of them are here today. And my brother, Christopher, has two of his sons with him, Christopher and George. And we have a member of our Board of Governors with us, Gene Cochran, and we have an, another outside board member who's not here with us. But they gave me the support and the opportunity to move forward this project. There's also someone in this crowd that I cannot, I would be very remiss if I didn't mention, is my wife, Sarah. There have been plenty of hours I've been on the phone with other people. Honey, please, yes, just a minute, I'll be back. And our four sons have been very supportive throughout this entire process. It's, uh, it literally takes a family to have pulled off what we did. So as, as we consider our people, this project and the future for our area, I know we have the work ethic. I know we have the talent. I know we have the leadership. I know we have the relationships. And I know us mountain folk, we have the pure grit and the determination to pull this off. I know we will be successful and we'll be creating a brighter day for all of Western North Carolina. However, if all of you who know me, we cannot stop here. We cannot be satisfied. We cannot rest on our laurels. We can't pat ourselves on the back and say, job well done. I'm reminded of a quote by Frederick Law Olmsted that it hangs on the wall beside my desk. I have all my life been considering distant effects and always sacrificing immediate success and applause to that of the future. 30, 40, 50 years from now, People will not likely remember this celebration, nor the difficult work of our collective teams that they put forth, and frankly, not even how the community came together during these truly unprecedented times. But that distant effect that Olmsted refers to will be the people who one day work for Pratt & Whitney and will provide income to their families for generations to come. They will be the living testament to our work to all who brought this about today and a legacy to our father, George Cecil. Thank you very much. So in closing, I, I hope we all recognize um, the kind of man that Jack Cecil is. Um, I've never met a more selfless, humble, and just committed to this community, anyone greater than he is. I was telling Sarah before we started, I, I've just never met anyone like him, and we're blessed to have him as part of this team in this community. So let's give him a note. So with that, again, thanks for everyone coming together today. I ask you to, you know, enjoy yourselves uh, this afternoon and, and mingle and congratulate our community on this big win. Uh, the media will, uh, we're, we will have, uh, the guests will, will be here to take some questions following the event um, and enjoy your afternoon. Thank you.